Fail to ban is a pretty cool piece of software that puts up a firewall on our web server against malicious attackers trying to break into our system. It does so by looking at log files from whatever services we tell it to, like SSH, HTTP, whatever else we might have running on our web server. And if it sees any malicious activity, it will take this hacker's IP address and put it in a blacklist. And that IP address won't be able to even try to log into our server for a certain amount of time. It, they will be put in a jail. I'll log on to my server and install the fail to ban package. After installation, fail to bans daemon will be running on our computer for as long as the computer's up, even through reboot. But it's not configured to be looking at any log files for services. We need to tell it to do that. I'll cd into the etc fail to ban folder where there are these configuration files for fail to ban and one of them jail.conf is boilerplate for the configuration file that we will edit we're not going to make these edits directly to the jail.conf file we're going to copy it over to a jail.local file in order to make our own local edits opening up that file in Vim and making this a little bit bigger, you will see a bunch of comments with uh, hash bangs at the beginning of the line, as well as these huge sections of the file demarcated by these bracketed headers like includes. And in the default section, there are a couple important configuration um, settings you might want to edit like the ban time, which is the number of seconds that a host is banned for. The default is 10 minutes. I turn this up a little bit because 10 minutes doesn't seem that long to block a hacker. I put mine up to an hour. Maybe that's not even long enough, but up to you to decide that. This max retry setting is the number of failures before a host gets banned. So the default is that a hacker can fail up to five times before the ban kicks in. I'll leave that default for now. Scroll through a bunch of other configuration till I get to the section called jails. And the first jail is the SSHD jail, which is what I wanna enable. So I will set enable to true for this SSHD jail and change the port to the port that I run SSH on, which is not the default. So put my port 22222 in there and close out this file and write it to disk. Now that I've changed the configuration for fail to ban, it only reads that at the beginning when the service starts. So I'm going to restart that service. and check that it started up okay in system CTL. I see the output that it started looks good. I can also look at the actual log output of fail to ban and confirm that my SSHD jail has started. Now that I've got this firewall set up, let's test it out. I'll open my configuration file, go down to the band time setting and turn it down to just 10 seconds for demonstration purposes. Restart fail to ban so that setting takes effect. And 
over on my Ubuntu server. Let's watch what happens in the fail to ban log file. If I change my user to a fake user that doesn't exist, Erica on Ubuntu, I try to log in via, SS via SSH, it fails, and fail to ban outputs found 192.168.1.10, and that's the IP address of my MacBook here. Do this a couple more times, and I'll see that ban kick in after the fifth time. At that point, if I try to log in, even with a user that exists on the Ubuntu system with the right permissions, I get connection refused. And this block is happening at a low level in the kernel. Um, fail to ban inserts the block rule at the IP tables level in the kernel, so I can't even make a TCP connection to this computer while the ban is enabled. I turn down the, the ban time to 10 seconds, so when my ban has lapsed, I'll see in the log that this user has been unbanned, and then I can log in like I did before with my user. Now, just to clean up what I just did. Turn that band time back up to an hour. Stop fail to ban. And I'm gonna truncate a few log files. This is the actual log file that SSH logs login attempts to. I'll truncate the fail to ban log itself and remove a SQLite database that fail to ban keeps the bans in. And start fail to ban again. and I'm back to normal. Now my firewall's up and I have some more security against my server.